Hey America, Duke Anson here. Nice to see you again. Today we're out at the range putting the Bagheera MG Light chambered in 6.5 PRC through its paces. First we're gonna verify zero real quick, make sure we're good, and then uh, try out a couple different loads, see how far we can stretch it today. Uh, we're at the range in Fossil Point in Decatur. They've got steel targets all the way out to about 8.50 today. So good opportunity to see what we can do with this gun. It's uh, primarily gonna be used for me as an antelope or deer hunting gun out west mule deer potentially and then see uh, see what we can do it's a little bit light problem with these light barreled guns and all the uh, uh, carbon fiber and wrapped barrels they heat up really quick so we only get about three or four shots before the bullets start to get a little wily see what uh, see what she does today it's about uh, I'd say seven to ten mile an hour winds changing out here we got a wind sock I'll show you down the range here but first let's check out zero two different loads 6.5 PRC is getting a lot of popularity, but there's ton, not a ton on the shelf readily available. So we've got two Hornady loads. So see what it does, and uh, hopefully we can find some nice groups out there today. Here's what we're looking at today. Wind socks blowing uh, a little bit left to straight into us here. We've got targets all the way out to about 8.50 today. I've got them, I'll put them on the spotting scope with the uh, uh, phone scope cam, see if we get some closer shots when we're stretching it out a little bit farther today. All right, we got three loaded up. Let's go verify our zero, and then we'll start stretching it out and get some fresh dope on this. So first thing I noticed is this uh, this bolt sticking a little bit. I'm not sure if it's specifically the, the load. It's just factory ammo. So have had trouble with some of the hotter loads doing the same thing. But this is just factory ammo. So test out some of the uh, ELDX and see if it has the same kind of effect. Well, zero is good. Let's go over to 250, see if we can get a couple of shots in rapid succession. Obviously, that's a more likely kind of range you'll be shooting. Uh, game for in the wild. So let's put a couple on there. Some pretty small little targets out there. I'd say they're six, eight inch targets out there. So let's see what we can do. Gun, unfortunately, as I mentioned before, is pretty light. So we're going to get some bounce off this. I go fast. I'll probably take the zoom pretty, pretty far back here. All right. So there's four targets. Let's go with that weird little. Kind of L-shaped one, second one over from the left. Let's see if we can take it down quick here. I've been playing a lot of different places with my thumb placement here. On some guns, especially some of my larger caliber guns, I want to put a thumb here. It's not a great place to rest your thumb if you're com coming with that style. Not a place to put an attachment as well. This trigger is also very curved. Um, some people prefer the kind of flatter face trigger. So just personal preference. Um, I like the trigger. It's fully adjustable. I've got it at about two and three quarters pounds, if I remember correctly. So I don't know, let's put them on that uh, little L-shaped target there. Uh, dope's only calling for two minutes up and wind is pretty dead here. Let me make sure we're... Yeah, wind's pretty dead now, so. All right, Kent is good. No problem with 250. That thing smacks. Uh, we're going to test it out at 750 right now. Dope says come up about 16 and a quarter, and we've got a wind coming straight at us now, so we're just adjusting a little bit for right from the barrel twist. Um, 
See how it does, the, these things take a long time to cool down. So even after just firing three shots, it's pretty hot to touch. These titanium suppressors especially get extremely hot. So we're gonna try out 750, see where that puts us at. And um, they've got full-size IP6 targets out there as well as one MOA targets at each of the stations as well. So we'll see, uh, see if we're on, if the dope's right, and then we'll, uh, we'll try and get some of the smaller targets. The other thing that's nice about this Bagara is there's an anti-camp bubble right here by the bolt. I did have some problems when I first got it. It was not matching my scope level and I re-verified the scope level several times. Turns out I just had to uh, tighten down the action screws a little bit and they ended up matching afterwards. So something to be aware of. I talked to Bagara, they were really nice uh, walking me through if there was you know, potentially any known issues, but um, said the action screws commonly get loosened as they're shipping or uh, going through production. So something to check if you get one of these. All right, let's go check 750. We'll go for the uh, Ipsic target out there, center line. Try one more. Three good hits, guys. That's a pretty tight group. Obviously, these lighter guns also bounce off target a little bit. This one's not too bad, but um, something to keep in mind if you're gonna have a longer shot and you need to have a quick follow-up. Either open up your magnification, take it down to a lower number, or potentially you know, put some weight on the top or have a hold holder on the top. A lot of lighter guns sometimes will hold like this just to keep it down, but not too bad on this one. Three good shots there. Uh, while we're waiting for the barrel to cool down, I'm going to do a product review on these later, but these are the Axle earbuds. Really interesting. They're super, super small. Let's see if we can get you guys a close-up of this here. Really small. They basically look like just foam ear tips attached to a cheap little plastic thing, but there's some kind of magic going on in there that anything over, I think it's 85 decibels, it'll start to automatically suppress it. Pretty expensive. I can't remember exactly what I paid for these. It was between five and seven hundred dollars. No, that's a bit of a range, but uh, I think I bought them when they were on special. But they work really good, and especially if you're trying to shoot some content or hear your your spotter or make some, you know, make some adjustments. You, they even have a Bluetooth version of these, I, I believe, as well that you can actually listen to stuff. Not that you should be listening to music on the range, but really great little earbuds. I've had them for about six to eight months now, and I really like them. Um, no messing with you know giant earmuffs, messing with your cheap weld. So these work really great. Um, really, really like these so far. So, all right, barrels cooled down. Now uh, let's move over to 800. See if we can put a couple shots on a man-ish size target. Maybe a small Finnish man, um, stunted by growth, caffeine early. Not a full-size man, but a man nonetheless. Also notice I put a bag on the top here. I'm zoomed in pretty tight. And I want to be able to trace my shot. So hopefully I can hold down the balance a little bit. Um, if you're in the field, it's okay to use your partner, small baby, uh, any kind of dead animal you've got laying around. Just something to hold it down. You've got to improvise. All right. All right, ready, send it. Top left, winged his shoulder there. Your favorite right side here. Yeah.
Well, I'm a mirage now, coming off that titanium suppressor. Not bad. It's a dead oak or juvenile Sasquatch, whatever. Well, I think overall it's a shooter. Um, obviously not gonna be taking a lot of 800 yard shots in the field, but certainly shows its capabilities. It makes those 200 shot yards a lot easier. Um, biggest things I noticed, uh, I've got a throw lever on here. The bolt is kind of small, so I'm hitting the throw lever. It's catching my knuckle each time. So if you're fully zoomed in, I can maybe make some adjustments on this, but I found going the other way, I couldn't take the bolt out when it was closed. Um, so I don't know, a couple little tweaks I might have to make here, but um, overall pretty uh, pretty happy with how this first, uh, first box went. Um, these are not cheap. Um, if you've got you know, one gun you want to invest in that you're going to try and do a lot with for um, different types of animals, different types of hunting, it's a pretty good option. It's not going to last you uh, forever. With the carbon fiber barrels, those are going to burn out quicker. 6.5 PRC is a hotter round, so you're not going to get as much life out of it as well. But um, it's a nice gun. I, uh, I can't complain about it. Love the um, love the styling. Design looks really nice. Uh, they do have a vertical grip as well. Some people prefer more of that kind of European style, the 90 degree angle. Uh, Arca Rail is where a lot of guns are going these days. I'm a huge fan of it. Um, these chassis guns make it so much more versatile for what you want to put on there, add weights, take it out. If you wanted to take this to a you know, PRS match or something like that, as long as you aren't shooting more than, than five to 10 shots, um, you know, might not be a bad option as well, but i um, pretty happy with it. Definitely we'll see this in the field this year. And um, let me know if you have any questions, go deeper if we want to. But this is Duke Handsome. Appreciate you joining today. And remember, I might be a father. <laughs>